the uncertainty. And so when we're in a fear response, we tend to avoid, to step back. When we accept uncertainty, we gain freedom and can operate more out of the approach, more out of love. So rather than, I don't know, and that's not okay that I don't know, we can more have that, I don't know, let's move forward and see. And the Bible verse that goes along with this one is, when I am afraid, in you I place my trust. And so faith, of course, can be a great aid in accepting uncertainty and helping us move into exploration instead of avoidance. And that exploration, that curiosity, moving forward can lead to the discovery of strength and even the ability to accept and find meaning in the harder things in life. And I think we can support our children in that, oh, I don't know what's going to happen, let's go forward and see, by talking about bravery. Ste steps like this kind of go against what can be our natural bent to avoid uncomfortable emotions, but by approaching that discomfort with curiosity, we can grow and we can gain freedom. Imagery is another thing that can be really helpful. A picture, even in our mind's eye, can be worth a thousand words. Images speak directly to the nonverbal primitive part of our brain and release a lot of uh, physiological shifts, either positive or negative. So let's talk about ways that we can use this superpower for good so that it can be a part of the after effect of stress. Each time we pull up an image, it's in a somewhat flexible state in our brain, and it can be altered. This is the phenomenon behind the fish story. You know how people, like, they might catch a fish this big, but with each retelling of the story, the fish gets bigger and bigger. And it's not that the person is lying. It's just that it was so fun to catch that fish. And they tell the story, they're re-experiencing it again, and there's that adrenaline that gets released into their brain, such a positive feeling, and the experience, the felt experience of what really happened becomes more and more positive. So what we can do with things that are stressful is like we remember it, remember it in a different way. Now, we're not changing history, but we can change the way that history feels in our body. So for example, if something difficult happened, you can try to bring attention to, and then what's the rest of the story? Like, how did it turn out okay? You know, maybe your kiddo got an ice cream cone, and then it fell on the sidewalk, and that was the end of the world. But then the ice cream person gave me a new scoop, gave me a new cone. And to really feel into that, or if it didn't happen that way, just even imagining how nice that would have been. So granted, it didn't help happen that way, maybe, originally. But by imagining a positive ending, we can change the way the distress is stored in our body. So ways that you can help your child continue to cope by, is by staying connected to them, spend quality time, listen, validate, empathize with their feelings, model healthy coping. They learn a lot from what they see parents doing. You can also attach some positive meaning to the pandemic. You know, on the one hand, it's been challenging. On the other hand, we've been able to have a lot more fun times together. You know, maybe we learned a new game. You can ease your child's worries, ask about their fears, try to reassure or problem solve. You know, what about that worries you most? And accept their feelings. You might say, oh yeah, I get that. I can see why that would be difficult. Tell me more. That's such a lovely invitation. Tell me what's on your mind. Tell me what's on your heart. So you can use the skills that we've been exploring here this evening to center your nervous system and its resilience zone, help your kiddos to do the same. Track what you feel as you stay there. Just for three breaths, it takes longer for the good stuff to register in our systems, to strengthen that neural connectivity and improve our resiliency. So I'm wondering if anyone has any questions or comments or 
Anything you would like to share from your experience? is how can you tell if you're stuck in that high stress? You know, generally you would notice that there's a lot of tightness that just isn't going away, or like stuck just on the hamster wheel of negative, negative thinking. Yeah, does, that, does that help as indications of being stuck in it? Yeah. And then if that's going on, you can use any of these strategies, maybe even just noticing, oh, the floor is beneath my feet. Like shifting the attention can be a huge thing. We can't always, well, we can't control what grabs our attention, but we can control what we shift our attention to. It's a great question, thank you. Other questions or comments? for letting me be here with you this evening. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. I know for myself, after listening uh, to this talk, I do a lot of this now. <laughs> that really works for me. <laughs> I'm doing that. Um, so hopefully, um, some of these tips and just even these visuals of understanding and like you said, how do I know when I keep on you know, those wheels and some things that we can do to help our own children as we recognize this time of, of stress and uncertainty um, and to be aware of these things. I, I found it very interesting, her comments about how the body naturally heals itself. Um, I think when we're under those prolonged times for so much, to be conscious of how you're feeling and how you're thinking and then to work on some of those strategies um, can really be um, helpful. So uh, thank you. Her uh, contact information too is on the bottom if you wanted to contact Catherine at uh, another time as well. So now we're gonna shift uh, a little bit and talk a little bit. One more movement one. <laughs> Maybe we'll do that a little later. <laughs> so with it. But we wanna talk a little bit about now family formation. So how many of you have been in family formation before? Just raise your hand. Great. And how many of you are new families for us? Oh my goodness, hello, welcome. I'm new too. <laughs> so I'm excited to be with you um, and to be learning with you and really our, our whole team to be working with you and your family. I think it's really a beautiful thing um, here at St. John's that uh, in this time of COVID and there's a lot of scaling back for different things, that St. John's is actually moving ahead. And so the position that was created and posted this year, I was very attracted to because your ministry has grown so much that I get to do the things that I have loved doing in ministry for the last 20 years, which is the sacraments and catechetical work and adult education. So we're all just very excited to be working with your family and taking all these age groups and having you here um, on Wednesday night and creating a real solid community for you to know each other and to grow with each other and to your families to get to know each other. So typically on Wednesday night, this is kind of uh, what things look like. So at, at five o'clock, they always have confession in the church, so that works out for you, and then there's mass at 5.30. Then to make this super easy for families, because we know you might be just running home from work and trying to, to get everything together, we do have a meal uh, here in St. Joseph's Hall, and we'll always let you know kind of what the menu is um, for you to be able to come with your family if that works for you. Um, you should try to take like an RCP, I think, too, so we can have an idea of that. Jen will talk more about that. And then at 6.30, we start the family formation, and it's a whole family affair. So we have a nursery available, and then uh, pre preschoolers and kindergartners, we have a adapted uh, lesson for them. And then for grades one through six, they will be doing the family formation curriculum that we'll talk about in a second. And they'll be uh, meeting with an age appropriate classroom within their peer group and doing a lesson. So those will be the, the classrooms within the school. And then for grades seven and eight, they go down to the, to the youth room. So when you walk in the door here, we'll have the, the home lessons 
Um, sometimes we might be doing something that we're first in large group, and we'll let you know about that, and we'll have signs at two. For instance, for October, we'll push all start into uh, the church, and we'll have some prayer time together. We'll interview the catechist and the, and the net team, and then we'll separate kind of out from that. But on a normal night, we'll just come in, grab the packets, and then the catechist will come and take the children uh, up to the classrooms and the youth go down to the youth room. And then the parents will stay here in St. Joe's Hall uh, for, with myself. Uh, one of the things that's really beautiful about this program is that everyone is coming and, and learning about on the same topic. So what your children are gonna be learning, we're gonna have that on an adult level, and then you'll get orientations for the home lessons that you'll do uh, later on. So this is a, a video that is from the family formation that uh, we, we found to be just very good. So we wanted to just play this. Family formation is our program that we use for grades um, preschool, all the bishop grades. I'm Bishop Daniel the Auxiliary Bishop of the Archdiocese of St. Paul, Minneapolis, and I'm delighted to let my support to family formation. What this model curriculum provides is a way for parents to bring the faith right into their home. The family formation model was created a little over 30 years ago in this parish, and at that time, we had a typical drop-off model. So parents would leave their kids on Wednesday evening and come back and pick them up and let the Holy Spirit and lots and lots of prayer. We made it on a model where parents would take control of their kids' religious education. Both the parents and the church have a responsibility in the education of the children in the faith. Parents the Catechism tells us are the primary educators of their children in the faith, and family formation seeks to put them back, if you will, into that role. We were attracted to family formation initially because we wanted a life-changing experience that would help us and our children grow in our faith. Family formation has been refined so that there is something well practiced to help preserve and allow the faith to flourish. What family formation strives to do more than anything is catch these parents and help them to fall in love with Christ and then they become the best teachers of their own children, the most effective teachers by far. The family formation model, it's for parents, it's for children, it's for families, it really is for society as a whole. The family formation model consists of two main parts. They're the classroom lessons that you come once a month, and everyone goes to an age-appropriate classroom. So parents will come to their classroom, and everyone learns about the same topic at their own level. The other main component is the home lessons and those are individual lessons that they will do together as a family one per week for the other weeks of the month it appeals to different learners you have crafts you have games you have songs you have stories and it's all things you get to do with mom and dad family formation works so well because the time is flexible my husband and i pick a time that works for both of us so we both get to be part of teaching our children, and there's not a lot of prep, you don't need to gather supplies. You just feel really empowered as a parent. My big passion is bringing this to those families that are a lot more immigrants. I love the beauty of it because the children can take the lesson and they can read it in Spanish to their parents, and they can learn together. The family formation model pulls in resources from sacred scripture, from the catechism, from the stories of the saints to pull together a very well-rounded lesson on all of the different topics that they address. They follow a three-year liturgical cycle, which is great because it expounds on what the kids are hearing in Mass. It's become an evangelizing tool not only for the domestic church, but for parishes and families outside of our own parish. I think that this is a wonderful alternative that parents will find for the education of their children, the growth of their faith and their families. And it's so exciting to see how this is spreading not just throughout the United States, but throughout the world. I would encourage other parishes to look at this curriculum. It's going to help give parents the words to use to pass on their faith and values to their children. It's so beautiful to see these children growing up so strong, so passionate, and so in love with God. Family Formation has done such great things for my family and my parish community. It's life-changing. We want to transform the world one family at a time, and that's what we've seen in big and small ways. We were able to get every parish in the world to adapt this model and to build strong families. That would shape our culture. That would be a renewal of the faith at its deepest core. You would transform the entire church. 
the most important factor for a child to grow up and keep his or her Catholic faith is the practicing faith of the parents. Family formation desires to provide opportunities to let parents be able to hand on that faith, fulfilling their mission. So that kind of gives a, a basic overview here of the program that we use. And it's been here at St. John's for, for many years, so there's a long legacy of empowering parents really directly with um, the content. Uh, this was a program that my husband and I uh, did when our children were little. And what's really beautiful about this is it's a three-year cycle that they talked about. So if you feel like you're getting it, you, you know, like you're a little rusty and you're like kind of stumbling over some stuff when they're little, take heart. In three years, you'll get another try at it. They're a little bit older, and it takes the lessons to a new level, too. So I think when we look back on what did we do well in our, in our household with our children, this is definitely one thing that we did well. Um, by sitting down and having this intentional time where we were talking about the faith and giving witness to it with our children, even if we did it really badly, <laughs> we were at least trying to do that with them and sharing our faith. And Bishop Cousins at the very end there, he, he referenced a study about um, the number one thing that we're finding when children uh, grow up and they take on the faith themselves, it's the credible witness that their parents have. And in October, I'll have that article and we'll kind of dive into that a little bit more. So knowing that this, this program can really uh, be life-changing um, for your family, so we're excited to start it. So just a couple bullet points. Um, their vision, transform one, uh, the world one family at a time. A unique family catechesis program, which promotes the parents and gives you the tools to be those primary educators. <laughs> And then it's designed to help parents respond to that church's calls that you are the, the first and foremost. Other documents will talk about that you're the best educators um, of the children. All right, so it originated really in our backyard, right uh, up here at the Church of St. Paul's, and it's grown both nationally and internationally. Uh, the lady that you see um, on there and some other people, they're translating into Spanish as well, so it's, it's really um, growing quite a bit. So this is that partnership with the parent. So one of your handouts you'll show, kind of just a little visual. We try to go to the first of the month. That means if you come to the church, so there's a little church there. But then the next three weeks of the month, it's a little home. So that would be getting the home lessons uh, to you. And at each one of these sessions, parents will be going through them so that you can feel well equipped. Also know that on your direct resource, so if you're kind of sitting down to do it and you're like, I can't remember how to do this, although I have to tell you they're really well written, um, but you can always contact me. Another handout uh, that we have here just looks at all the topics that we're going to be covering. As I said in the video, it's a three-year cycle, and it follows the liturgical year. So as you're doing these lessons, many times what you're going to be doing at home, you'll go, hey, we just heard that at Sunday Mass, and they really... Um, They've done a very intentional uh, job of making this right within the heart of the liturgical year. Within the three-year cycle, you'll find that we cover all of the curriculum cycles, so all of the sacraments, the credo points, and then um, topics of prayer and also her moral life, so those four pillars that the Catechism talks about. Then, like I said, uh, it, it repeats in three years. So you'll be doing them again, but there's a higher level. So there's two levels. There's actually three levels now because they have a preschool level too. So preschool, and then um, first through third, and then four through six. So we layer it, and that's a, a great way to be teaching the children um, going back into these topics and layering them. Okay. And then also, uh, this year will be cycle be you, which we're in, in the church, and then I'll flip over in Advent to see, and then we go from September until May. So you also have the family formation calendar um, that's on here too, that you can post and put on what will be coming here uh, on site for us. You'll also find that within the time that you come here, 
We'll also be incorporating other things such as the safety lessons that we do uh, every year, which are archdiocesan uh, mandated. We'll also have different celebrations, so going to reconciliation, parents and children will provide that opportunity uh, for you. And we'll also have different times where we're gonna bring the kids back in with the parents and have a prayer service together or look at Stations of the Cross together or different things like that. Um, so that's, that's what we do some of those nights. All right, and then with just a couple more minutes that I have here, I just wanna tell everyone about the Archdiocesan Synod. So this year, we are in the middle of a synod process and our Archbishop is asking all parishes to participate, all adults. So here's a quick little promo on it. Your participation is vital to the success of our city. I call for this in to help you discern and address the most pressing needs of our local church. simply a political parliamentary exercise. It is not about simply having people share their own opinion. It is about listening to the Holy Spirit. If there is no Holy Spirit, there is no sin. Dun, dun, dun. I know, I love, I love that. It's like, oh no. I know. I think it's great. All right, so um, we have to take a year pause. The first year we did all those prayer listening sessions, I hope you were able to go to them. I sit on the executive committee and we ran 20, 30 of them, they were great. It was wonderful to have the people come out. When you look back on pictures, we're all sitting so close to each other. <laughs> they were usually full of this. But 35,000 comments that were then, we coded them all. And then the Archbishop looked at everything and he said, there's three major areas that I want now the parish to sit and talk about. And how we're gonna do that is within um, the small groups. So that's where we're at over here. Getting into forms of about eight people and discussing these topics. It'll be for six weeks, it'll start in October, and the sessions are about two hours. And then you'll see the next part of it is we'll have about 10 representatives from our diocese go to a deanery meeting, and actually St. John's is a host site for that. And then in June 3 to 5, two of those members from our parish will actually participate in the synod. And then he'll take all of that, our archbishop, and then he'll have a pastoral letter next advent. So we're right in the middle of this synod, this walking together, this listening to the Holy Spirit. Um, so he's moving forward, but he's doing that with us. So we just encourage you to participate. There's many opportunities. I'm going to lead some open sessions on Thursday morning or Thursday night, 9.30 or 6.30. Child care is available for those. And then there are some existing um, reach more groups that are opening their times up for you. So there's some times on Monday, there's an afternoon time. And then on Wednesday night, there is a time as well. So if these Wednesday nights work good for you, um, have the, the kids secured at home and then come on in to do that. So there's a QR code that you can register online and in the foyer there's more information and we'll, we'll get that out for you. Okay? And so now I'm going to hand it over to Jen so she can talk a little bit more about um, the, the classroom time. The, your home lessons you have here, I just encourage you to kind of to go into them and take a look at them. I'll read through them. This is kind of like the one where you, okay, let's just try it. <laughs> and then when you come up back in October, we'll have an opportunity really to kind of dive in and see how that all went. There's just a couple things that I want to highlight uh, for that for you. So if you just look at right at the very uh, beginning, in here, the monthly lesson is going to be on the Bible. There's a guide to how to use the home lessons. And then it'll encourage you also to create your family's prayer center. We'll talk more about that in October. I kind of modeled something here. Um, and then they have a lot of QR codes. So as you do the lesson with your child at the end, if you wanted to do some quizzes with them, 
Um, or they have all the memory verses that Jen will talk about in a minute. They have some audios that go to that. So always check out those QR codes too because there's more um, that they have for that. And then if you have a preschool child, then there's a corresponding preschool lesson that's based on the same topic. All right, now Jen, I promise I will hand this over to you. Okay, so I just wanted to circle back um, to what Jill spoke about earlier when we had the schedule up. Um, it said that at five o'clock, we always have confession. And the one thing that makes that important to you guys is that we offer childcare during confession. And so um, childcare is upstairs in room 209. And even if your child isn't signed up for childcare because they're old enough that they could go um, to the classrooms, I have brought my kids into confession before and it's a little bit awkward, I'm not gonna lie. So um, this is an awesome opportunity to be able to bring your kid up to childcare for 10 minutes, go to confession without the big long lines that you have at Advent and Lent, you know, you can get in and out quick, then you can go back up and grab them. Um, so that's a really great convenience that we have, and hardly anyone takes advantage of it. So there's usually no waiting for um, child care. There's always room up there. Um, so that's one thing I wanted to point out. Um, another thing is about the dinner. We will be letting everyone know every month what we're having for dinner in advance so that you can know if that's something that you want to make time for. Um, this month in October that's coming up, we're going to be having taco in a bag. So we kind of try to do things that the kids like. We'll also have like a big bowl of lettuce so that, you know, if parents want to do a little bit more of the salad type of thing and a little bit less just the taco and a bag will accommodate that um, but we'll try to let you know every month in advance um, what we're going to have i'd also like as kind of a new thing this year to get some people to sign up to be host families and what that would be is just to maybe get here a few minutes early help us with greeting people and then when it comes time for serving the food um, to help Missy if there's things, you know, because of COVID, we're not going through the line and scooping our own stuff anymore. We need to have someone who's helping with serving. Um, so just to get to some volunteers to help with that. So I'm gonna have a little, I actually have two clipboards. Um, there's one right here and I'll put it over. Michaela's got the other one over there and there's some pens. So you can just fill in your name and your email, and then I have a couple other volunteer opportunities. Um, this is not like a, a blood oath, where if you sign up for this, I'm gonna hold you to this. I just wanna get some um, people that are interested and willing to do it. Um, in addition to the host family, um, we also need hall monitors. So um, that's literally sitting in the hall of the first through sixth grade. Um, classrooms and just being there so that kids aren't trying to walk out they're getting to the bathroom and then getting back out in a timely manner they're not you know doing anything they're not supposed to be doing in the bathroom um, so if you are interested in being a hall monitor or if you're willing to be a substitute we are like so blessed at this church that we have such generous parishioners we have all of our catechist spots filled and none of them are parents of our kids, which is really great for you to be able to just come and relax, listen to the speaker and soak it all in, ask questions, figure out the packets. Um, that's pretty uncommon, I think. I think at most churches, parents are having to do double duty. They're having to go up and teach classes but then also teach their kids when they get home. So we've got a really awesome group of catechists who have been doing this for a long time. We've got a couple new people too. Um, 
But I just think that that is so great. And when you meet the catechists next month, make sure to thank them for all of their help and hard work. That brings me to this weekend. We are having at all of our masses a blessing of our catechists and families. So that's all of you guys, that's all of our catechists, that's all of the families that are involved in all of the other ministries that we have here. So I think it'll be after this sermon, just listen, no matter what mass you're at this weekend, he should announce that there'll be a blessing of catechists and families. If you can just stand up in the pew right where you are um, and just receive the blessing, make the kids stand up. Um, I just think it's really important. We have so many generous parishioners who their kids are grown and they're no longer in these programs, but they're still donating money, they're still donating their time and their service, and it's just so great for them to be able to see all the families that are involved in all of our different classes and formation opportunities. Um, so please, oh, does that mean I've talked too long? If it just clicks out. So just, um, if you're here this weekend, please stand um, when we do the blessing. Um, and then I think Jill kind of talked to the different classes. Um, we will kind of let you know when dinner is done to bring your kids up to uh, the child care room. So if you have kids through kindergarten, they will go up there. There'll be some playtime for the kids, and then the preschoolers and kindergartners will go and do their lesson. The uh, first through sixth graders will be taken by the catechists into the school classrooms for their lessons. And then the seventh and eighth graders will go down with Michaela, and they will go into the youth room. And a couple things that we're doing just this year to kind of kick up the energy because we're learning about the Bible, um, we're really going to try to focus on the wog logs, and if any of you know from last year, I can be very generous when it comes to giving prizes for the wog logs, because I think food is very motivational for kids, at least my kids love, like, for one little tiny bag of Skittles or something, they will do amazing things. I'm like, seriously? 25 cents worth of candy and you're okay great whatever I need to do so we will have prizes for our wog logs wog logs just mean word of God now I'm like shouting into it wog logs mean word of God so basically it's just this little ring you'll get um, at the beginning and you just fill out the little calendar anytime your kids read from their Bible, they read um, a saint story. If you read to them from the Bible at the, you know, at bedtime or something, that counts. Put it on the calendar and they will get treats. They just show it to their catechist and we will have some different prizes for them. Not just food, but food as well. Um, like Jill said, we'll also have some memory verses. They're pretty short and easy. I know some kids hate memorizing stuff. That's why we're having both options. If they like to memorize things, and some kids are like incredible. They can read it twice and they've got it memorized. It's just kind of a cool thing to challenge them with. You know, not something to stress out. If they don't like doing it, don't make them do it. But if they like doing it, we will have prizes for their memory verses. And then this year, we're also going to be trying to learn all of the books of the Bible. And we've got cool t-shirts printed. And once your kids can recite all of the books of the Bible, they will get a t-shirt. Whether they'll wear it to school or not is another question. But it's still kind of cool to have, you know, make that accomplishment. And then they can tell their kids in 20 years, I knew all those books of the Bible. And we've got fun songs to help them learn it, so it's going to be a great year this year. I think the kids are going to love being back in the classrooms with kids their own age, with the catechists. We've got some really fun catechists. And then I just wanted to also talk about our 
safety protocols for the year. Everyone's got the sheet. I'm not going to read the whole thing to you. It's a lot of common sense that you already know. If you're sick, don't come. We love you, but just stay home, do the lessons at home, send someone to pick up the packet. If you have a confirmed case of COVID, there's directions here. Um, you're allowed to return to campus when symptoms have substantially improved and it's been at least 10 days since you first felt sick or tested positive. If you are here and you end up testing positive for COVID, let us know. We will let MDH know. We'll let, um, we have to let the Archdiocese and Catholic Mutual know, and then MDH will take care of the contact tracing. Um, we will, of course, be offering hand sanitizer. We'll still be doing our cleaning protocols. And the state's legal mandate required face covering has expired so we have moved from that mandate into it's just now considered a recommendation um, parents and guardians you know are able to determine what's best for their family so no person will be prevented from wearing um, a mask at a parish event you know it is encouraged um, if you have any questions you know, after you read through this, you can come and talk to us. And other than that, I just wanted to point out, if you're here for Sunday Mass, we have a nursery that's over by the uh, priest's office for kids that are one to three. Sunday school is for kids three through kindergarten. And then we also have something that we started um, this past year's the Catholic Kids Bulletin, so you can grab one of those. And I heard from a couple parents whose kids are a little bit older, and they said, oh yeah, we don't let them have that during Mass. We keep that, and then when they're begging for our phone for Candy Crush or some other game, we whip this out and make them do it before they can crush candy. So all kinds of fun things that you can use to help your kids. So, and I've got our date on here for our All Saints party, Wednesday, October 27th at 6 p.m. We'll have more info on that coming, and I will turn it over to Michaela now. Okay, am I supposed to play the part? I think so. Okay. Hi. In the beginning, my name is Michaela. I'm the youth minister, so I work with grades 6 through 12. Um, and then that also includes for family formation, 7th and 8th graders, as you have heard. So what our program actually looks like, if you don't have a 7th and 8th grader, you can listen because you'll have one eventually, but this is mostly for those, is what our program is, is we don't actually do the home lessons. What we ask instead of the home lessons is that you participate in our youth ministry program and are trying to combine those all together. So family formation and youth ministry all together and really focusing on that community aspect as well with other uh, middle schoolers. So you should have gotten one of these schedules in the, at the beginning if you have a seventh and eighth grader. And what that just says is that family formation will have small group, just like the in-class lessons for the other students. We have it down in the youth room and our net team then um, helps facilitate those. And then we have middle school youth group once a month. It's usually the second Wednesday of the month for the same time, 6.30 to 8. Um, and that's really about community. We have kids from our school, families come. That is also open to sixth graders, so six through eight. So if you have a sixth grader, bring them on over to that as well. And that kind of structure is game, a topic of some sort, small group so they can discuss whatever topic we did. And then we always end in prayer whether that's worship, praying the rosary, Lexio Divina, something like that, but we want to give those kids a time for personal prayer in some capacity. And then the other part is we have what's called Extreme Faith Night. So Extreme Faith Camp is our launching pad. It's um, what happens during the summer. Huge conversions from our students go on at Extreme Faith Camp. So again, that's for 6th through 12th graders in the summer, uh, but we really want to 
help that and help that grow from what conversion happened over the summer. So that is a more an adoration focused night with praise and worship and adoration. And we usually have a larger game and uh, more social time with that. And then we have um, adoration and with praise and worship. So that is usually the last Friday of the month. And that one is from 7.30 or 7 to 8.30. I know that's timing a little different, but 7 to 8.30 for Extreme Faith Night. We also have a couple of other events that are on your schedule that you are more than welcome to come to. Um, but that is what we are doing for family formation. We're combining the two, youth ministry and family formation. Um, so we just ask that your seventh and eighth graders come to those instead of doing the home lessons. Also, just quick mention, we do our net team comes on Friday. So that's really exciting for us. And then on Saturday, and this is for all families, so net does a variety of things for our parish. It mainly focuses on our youth, but really you'll see them around at Family Information Nights and they want to get to know you and we want you guys to get want to get to know them. So they come on Friday and on Saturday night from 7 to 9, we're having a bonfire and rosary in our parking lot just to pray for our year. But you are more than welcome just to come for a little bit or a, the whole time. Um, bring the whole family while s'mores provided. So that's this Saturday from 7 to 9 and they'll be at all the masses as well. And then youth group also starts on Wednesday, the 22nd. So, and that's from 6.30 to 8. And that's for middle school and high school. So if you have a high school at home, I know a lot of you guys have younger kids, but if you do have a high schooler or know of a high schooler or something like that, um, high school youth group is from 8 to 9.30. And middle school youth group is 6.30 to 8. They're back to back. So I have little cards for youth group. Um, but if you have any questions about any of our programs, I know that we're all going to be here. Um, we're really grateful that you came out and spent your night with us. Um, we're really excited about this year. We think it's going to be great. We're grateful to be back to somewhat normal in community, and that is really the beauty of what the church can do. So again, if you have any questions, you can come up to any of us um, afterwards, but we are just going to close in a prayer. So in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Heavenly Father, who gave St. Joseph to Jesus and Mary as protector and guide, grant that our archdiocese and synod, under the protection and guidance, may help us discern your direction for our church. May we listen as he listened, trust as he trusted, obey as he obeyed, receive as he received, love, love as if he loved, and share in his life and devotion to Jesus and Mary. Amen. St. Joseph. Pray for us. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Again, thank you all so much for coming. And also, if we haven't had a chance to meet, just to come up and introduce yourself to each one of us, that's always really helpful for us as well. Thanks.